interesting and it has a very much potential in future aspects, particularly for the lab on a chip. So I uh, took it further and let us have some discussion on that. What it is, some fundamental things I'll talk about. Okay, so uh, one thing just I want to know before starting uh, the student or uh, uh, the audience, what are the backgrounds? Just in a grossly mechanical, electrical, both as well as the basic science. Is it? Hello? So it is a so there are people from all, all the streams. There are people from mechanical, from VLSI, from electrical, from computers. So there are there's a very broad audience. Broad audience. Okay. That will help us. Yes. And definitely I want to be uh, it should be the in the interactive mode. And so let us from ah. biology and all these places as well. Ah, good. 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 Very nice to meet you. And uh, and now let us start quickly going to that my topic. I am audible and I am uh, my slides are visible to you. <clears throat> yes, okay. Sir. Okay. Yes. Uh, so uh, probably you have started the recording also. Uh, the topic is such, uh, you know, this is the embedded system for lab on a chip uh, technologies. Uh, by this uh, five days, uh, this workshop, you can now understand what is lab on a chip and how to deal with this, the signal processing part, which is a very, very important aspect. And at, it should be deployable, low cost, all these things, issues, limitations, we have to take care. And finally, it is a, a signal processing part that comes in. And of course, it should be the application oriented, okay, customized design. That aspect the embedded system comes into. So uh, let us move forward. And my, in my presentations, I have, I'll talk about mostly the, some of the introduction and the application part and what is embedded system. First, I'll talk about that. Then only one or two slides, I'll put it uh, what way it is uh, useful for a lab on a chip. And uh, very briefly, I'll talk about that and uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, citing the others work. And next uh, two or, if, uh, or three topics, uh, briefly I'll talk what in my lab I do it using the embedded system. My lab actually, the, uh, the students works in the development of different sensors, biomedical sensors. So um, I'll talk on that uh, side. Wait. So uh, <clears throat> now let us start the lab on a chip reversal technologies which allows operation that normally required a laboratory synthesis process and analysis of the chemicals, not only chemicals, in the uh, uh, subsequent slides, you'll understand that it beyond the chemicals also, okay, uh, those signals has to be analyzed uh, at a miniaturized scale within a portable or handheld uh, devices. In the conventional lab on a chip, it contains the micro channel, which allows the uh, liquid samples to flow inside the chip. And it integrates the measuring, sensing, and actuating components. And it integrates the different laboratory functions in a single chip with a dimension ranging from millimeter to the centimeters. And so uh, this uh, LOC focuses on the hybrid devices. Okay. <clears throat> Moving, so this is all about this LOC and I am not going into details of the LOC. Coming to this embedded system, what is an embedded system and what is the significance of this embedded system? The embedded system is a microcontroller or microprocessor based system designed to perform certain dedicated function. Okay. So you have a microcontroller or microprocessor where 
the uh, programming is already embedded for carrying out some dedicated functions and the signal that will be taken or input that will be taken for this uh, function uh, is the loc kind of thing this computing system is tightly integrated with hardware and software part both is there specifically designed to execute the dedicated function and it can be this microprocessor based hardware software system it can be a independent system or it can be a part of a larger system and it contains the mechanical i mean the loc part may contain the mechanical part may contain the electrical part or any combination of the parts to perform the specific task in this particular uh, presentation we are focusing on the loc but a ecg signal along with the bio impedance if we take a take the signal both ecg signal and bio impedance signal together if you do this some kind of a processing signal processing you can get various functions of our cardiovascular system uh, vital components you can get it cardiac output and other various components you can get it and therefore it not only uh, uh, deals with the fluidic parts it it deals with the mechanical part electrical part chemical part biological component all together it spans over the different uh, almost all domains here an embedded system application range from the digital watches to the microwaves or to the hybrid vehicle to the avionics you can now understand what it is <coughs> the significance is that due to their compact size real time computing low cost and low cost and power consumption simple design aspect low maintenance and high availability uh, it becomes the very popular and includes to the into the human life these are the characteristic features of the embedded system it should be real time computing it should be in compacted nature not a very bulky circuit it should do uh it should be the low cost and the power consumption should be minimum simple design aspect plug and play kind of thing and low maintenance for uh, maintenance and the high availability because of these advantages this unique features and characteristics the embedded system enable the design and optimization that make it possible for us to enjoy the benefit of technologies while minimizing the cost and power consumption both the things okay not only the cost effective power consumption is also drastically reduced particularly for the biomedical applications when a, a system is going to use in a remote places the resource limited places where we do not have any uh, 220 volt supply even not that our 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 supply line i have to work with the battery only so power consumption is a factor okay. and at the same time you can understand that how complex it is because it deals with the signal processing with a microcontroller or microprocessor you have a different other peripheral circuits memory chips okay <clears throat> and the other arithmetic logic units everything is there so considering all aspect how i can minimize the power consumption this is a challenge this is a challenge and uh, putting together this becomes the key enabler of the iot internet of things so the advantages are reduction in the overall system as compared to the electronic motherboard kind of things uh, design very very compact and small size it gives the better efficiency and the performance because so the software embedded embedded software i can take uh, do lot many things instead of having the conventional circuit using the conventional circuit low power consumption less time required to the to market the product and various kinds of sensors can be integrated together in a single platform okay uh with the various channels i can do it and today uh again uh, as i belongs to the 
uh, school of medical science and technology so uh, many of the examples that i'll cite uh, will be on your medical side biomedical sites so you know the endoscopy to so the endoscopy you will get the images of the your intestine and the other components now uh, endosc endoscopy means you will put a channel uh, sorry that you put a uh, insert a tube a, inside the uh, your um, body and in the tube itself you have a camera light component and uh, uh, associated circuits and you will get the image and that signal will be taken out and it will be recorded and you will get the entire image as long as the catheter is inserted uh, more and more you will get the layer by layer images okay as it move forward but see in this case a patient has to be in the hospital admitted in the hospital and to the help of a uh, medical assistants you have to uh, they they perform this kind of a work and it may be for uh, one hour's time half hour's time like that it's a time consuming and uh, and altogether uh, the patient has to be uh, in the hospital instead of that today you have a a capsule endoscopy just in a capsule you have a led light you have a camera you have a different sensors you have a signal processing circuits everything and the and the transmission uh, data transmission circuit also with the rf module as well as the battery see all these components are in a miniature capsule person will take it inhale it and uh, uh, and will now do his own job he don't have to admit in the hospital as the capsule will move forward the with the help of a light led light inside camera will take the picture around the vessel by intestine all uh, if i integrate the different sensors like ph sensors carbon dioxide sensors those are the important uh, sensors temperature sensors or some other biosensors you can integrate it and as the capsule moves those sensors will will Uh, interact with the ambient to get the uh, measurement whether it is a ph whether it is a uh, concentration of oxygen whether it is any other protein molecule bio molecule they uh, those measurement will interact with the sensors and those sensors individual sensors will have a electrical output electrical signal will be generated as well as continuously simultaneously the camera will take the picture of the different sections and then you have a signal processing part after signal processing the data will be transmitted outside the body outside the body and the patient will have will have a cassette where all this data will be recorded while he is in the job while he is in the house he may not have to be admitted in the hospital now you can understand what is the the signal processing part it is very very robust and this whole things it will be for 24 hours in the next day the excision it will be capsule will go out of the body but in the cassette it will be recorded for 20 for 12 hours 24 hours time whatever data it will send and now you can think about what is the embedded system just this is a given example very tight things where many things are there but to do the process you have to capture the signals then you have to do the signal processing part then you have to transmit it everything is there and that is possible with the with the embedded circuit in a chip in a chip form which part for the chip will perform those those uh, your your uh, task and send the signal out okay and uh, although it is not uh, in indian market but the foreign market it is available now uh, so the component of the embedded system 
An embedded system contains the computer hardware with the software embedded in it at one or other component. The building block blocks are central processing unit, memory chip, RAM and ROM. Input devices are there. Output devices will be there. Uh, input output devices will be based on what kind of application it is. The communication interface should be there, as I told you, an application specific circuit. And the software will be loaded in the memory chip, which is known as a, called as a firmware. The building box, the central processing unit is there, which it has a RAM or ROM will be connected and both way the data has to transmit. At the input side, you have input devices that will send the signals to the CPU and then through this circuit, it will perform. And uh, then you have a um, application specific circuit. If I, uh, uh, suppose here, a glucose monitoring or uh, glucose monitoring sensors along with the insulation insulating um, delivery system. It is a system. Glucose sensors is an individual sensors, which actually detects the blood glucose level using a electrochemical process. In a nerve cell, in the blood plasma, you have a glucose that will interact with some enzyme, GOD, glucose oxidase, and produce uh, this is a electrochemical process. It produces a free electrons. Now, depending on the concentration of the uh, glucose, the number of electrons will vary. So, if I can measure the current in the electrochemistry, if I can measure the current, I know I can tell what is the concentration of the glucose. That is the part of the sensing. Next. The next year, suppose the uh, body uh, uh, always maintains some certain glucose level. If it is below that or if it is high, if it is high glucose level, in that case, some actuator will be activated. So I found that the glucose level is high. Through the specific circuit and through the CPU, other circuit will be activated. The other circuit means the insulin has to be delivered. How insulin will be delivered? It is a liquid and it is through injection. In a conventional process, it takes uh, an injection and uh, deliver the insulin. Instead of doing so, for, for that what you need, you need a, a reservoir tank for the insulin to preserve the insulin. You need a microfluidic channel for the Flow of the uh, flow of the insulin uh, fluid, as well as you need a needle, which actually delivers that drug into the body, into the under the screen. These all are your mechanical part: a tank, reservoir for the drug, uh, microfluidic channel, the, uh, the needle structure, hollow needle. These all are your mechanical component. But, and that has to be integrated. And once the, the glucose sensor, it will switch, it will trigger that the glucose level in the body is very high through this CPU. Then the insulin delivery part will be activated. After activation, there is a pump, small miniature pump which will be activated and it will start actioning and now start a, a take the fluid from, uh, take the insulin from the tank, then it will flow through the microfluidic channel and it will then flow through the needle and the drug will be injected under the dermis layer. That is the whole idea. So there, you have a two component, sensing component and the delivery component, drug delivery component. And together it is known as a system. This has to be carried out using this specific circuitry and CPU. And then uh, uh, with the, this will be, will be connected 
with the electrically electronically connected with the mechanical component also on the other side the sensor part will only deliver what is the output of the glucose sensors in the electrical form and whole thing will be performed okay as well as uh, uh, you can communicate the data what is the glucose level every hour it will it will sense and this signal or the data will be transmitted to the outside also this is the whole part with the example i have given you why microcontroller a microcontroller popularly known as a single chip computer contains single silicon chip with memory and all input output peripherals on that a typical microcomputer has the following features arithmetic and logic units memory and storing unit eprom for non mode of non volatile data ram for storing the variables and the specific function uh, function registers input output port timers and counters uh, adc analog to digital converter circuit for the reset parts of say, serial programming instruction uh, decoder and a timing and control unit and serial communication port uh, uh, this is a vast uh, 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 list uh, along with that many other components may be there based on the application but the some of the minimum things that are required it is uh, given over here so uh, coming to the classification types of embedded system it is based on the based on the performance of the uh it is it is based on performance and functional requirement whether it is in the real time that i the glucose sensors i told you it may be in a stand alone it may be in the network based or mobile based and based on the performance of the microcontroller whether it is a small scale medium scale or sophisticated where the large memory is also required and very robust and powerful microcontroller or microprocessor is also required in the small scale or even in the medium scale say for the glucose monitoring it is a it is a, a small scale i can say or the capsule endoscopy it is a medium base in that case the microcontroller may not be that much robust we do not require that much but for a sophisticated things uh, it will be required so based on that we can choose the different types of microcontroller on the other side it is based on the performance and the functional requirement we have to accordingly you have to design it the stand alone embedded system do not require a host system it is a stand alone itself it work by itself only it takes the input either in a analog form or in a digital form and processes calculates and converts that means the signal processing is done and the data will be generated and the resulting data will be uh, given transmitted through the, the circuit like here it is a mp3 player digital camera video game console microwave oven temperature measurement system everywhere you have say temperature measure temperature sensor is one part only but suppose if i want to monitor the room temperature over the 24 hours and if the data uh, every hour the data temperature data will be transmitted to my mobile so that i can remotely uh, monitor the room condition in that case a temperature sensor will be embedded with this uh, uh, will be integrated with the uh, embedded system and the data transmission will take place similarly when the microwave oven whatever switches we push according to the Uh, the microwave power requirement time and the other factors uh, convection process or uh, or other parameters there is a microprocessor which actually controls and uh, perform the 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 oven uh, functionalities it may be in the real time system in the real time system i talked about it is a glucose sensors network based sen embedded system in that case we have to uh, get a access to the resources like a lan or wan well as network system or a lan okay and mobile embedded system uh, mobile embedded system are used in a portable embedded devices like cell phone mobiles digital camera 
okay and uh, this way it will work in the digital camera if, if this camera is integrated with my uh, with my uh, with my uh, digital camera is integrated with my cell phone then uh, through this uh, embed, through embedded system whenever i'll take a snapshot through the digital power, powerful digital camera the photo will come photo uh, snapshot will come into my uh, google drive itself that way it is possible so small scale designed with a single 8 bit or 16 bit controller here it comes what will be the resolution how accurately you want so particularly in the in the uh, small scale it is in general it is 8 to 16 bit or in a uh, medium scale it is 16 to 34 bit 32 bit in the sophisticated embedded system these systems have a enormous hardware and software complexities and many of the most of the sophisticated embedded system it may not be a stand alone it will be it will the embedded system will be a part of a robust uh, other uh, system okay. whereas for the small scale and medium scale embedded system it mostly it is a uh, independent stand alone system can be now application size biomedical instrumentation ecg recorder blood cell recorder some of the things i now talk about the communication system you have peripheral co controller of a computer or uh, industrial instrumentation side cnc machine dc motor controller or a, any process controller we need a uh, embedded system and scientific like a digital data storage cft display monitor collector even today in a in a in a household tv system we have a embedded system and you can perform many things there now uh, with this small introduction and general introduction of the embedded system what is that and now go to the specific uh, application recent trend for the biomedical application full impedance cardiography measurement device using the raspberry Uh, pi3 and system on chip biomedical instrumentation solution here this is actually this paper i am now citing this paper and 2018 it was uh, published to this itply journal of uh, biomedical uh, uh, informatics this is the whole architecture i have shown him using a raspberry uh, microcontroller it can be transmit the data and a, a desktop or a laptop can be connected and on the other side this is connected with the two chips mostly one is ad5933 which actually gets or uh, or or uh, collect the impedance data at the particular locations and on the other side you have a adas1000 which is actually the ecg uh, getting the ecg signal and uh, then uh, process it using this two you can get the many inform parameters information about the cardiovascular system of a human so it is a impedance cardiometry cardiography icg uh, impedance cardiography is this a non invasive method for monitoring the cardiac dynamics using the electrical bioimpedance this new device simultaneously records the ecg ecg through these chips as well as the icg signal and then send the data via bluetooth to the pc and in the pc itself you can do the uh, calculate the z z uh, delta z means it is the impedance variation that signal i can do and then you can get the time derivative of that signal del, del z by del t i can calculate and then you will mix up or correlate with the ecg signal uh, to get the different physiological parameter using the matlab this can be done using the raspberry pi uh, raspberry chip as well as you can do it uh, in a desktop computer itself both way it can be uh, performed as i told ad5933 performs the amplometric impedance measurement between the two terminal using the 1 kilo ohm to the 10 mega ohm 
in the programmable intended coincidence. Coincidence also you can vary from one kilowatts to hundred kilowatts using this dedicated chip AD5933. Using it here, I can do this uh, the bioimpedance get the bioimpedance data. The calculation of certain uh, hemodynamic parameters and time interval provides a direct description of the mechanical function of the heart. And those parameters are cardiac output, stroke volume, and the left ventricular ejection time, pre-ejection period, systolic time ratio. These are the few parameters I have cited here. Many more you can parameter you can calculate using the bioimpedance data as well as the ECG data, which are taken uh, simultaneously from the uh, from the body uh, using these two dedicated chip, and then the whole data will be transferred uh, to the embedded system. There itself, we can load the, uh, the programming to calculate this, or the data can be uh, transmitted uh, to the desktop via Bluetooth or by some other means. This is the whole idea. And this I am saying again, uh, telling this the uh, some example I am taking it from this journal paper. Skip this one. The other, I'll now come to the uh, some ongoing projects at Biomins Lab at Kharagpur, where uh, polyaniline functionalized impurematic paper sensor for the urine pH measurement. This pH measurement of the urine is very important, but here. I'll not talk about the uh, details of the sensor part, but basically it is a, a sensor has to be fabricated using a, a nanomaterial and one of the uh, material is your uh, very sensitive material is your polyanion. Polyanilin, it is synthesized and then it the uh, paper using a, a chromatography paper it, the, uh, this polyalanine is being functionalized and then it will be put on the paper, chromatographic paper. Now, <clears throat> after putting this, the two electrodes will be, will be fabricated on the two sides of the paper. And these are just a schematic I have shown you. And some of the, uh, this is the entire, the picture of the entire device where you can see it's a very small size compared to a coin. And two sides, it has the entire photographic paper is, is soaked with this polyaniline. Uh, uh, and then at the two sides, two electrodes has been um, fabricated. It will take the connection of these two electrodes and then you have to uh, connect with a embedded system. Now, if you uh, do the impedance analysis, the curve will be like this. For the different frequency, uh, if you plot the impedance of this device, you will get this kind of a variation. For different pH of the urine value, pH 5 to 8, it has been uh, um, shown here. Once you get it, then based on the electrical impedance, uh, impedance uh, of the entire, entire, entire sensors, I can get the different component of the electrical equivalent component of the sensor part, like R1, R2, Q2, Q3, I'm not going into the details, but these are the uh, uh, electrical equivalent component of a resistance and the capacitance value for the, um, for, uh, through which we can get, we can measure the pH value. And then, a calibration chart has to be prepared. Here I have just shown you many, whatever sensors we fabricate, we should have a calibration chart. The calibration chart in the x-axis, you have a known uh, variation, uh, variant. The uh, uh, y-axis, you have an output. So you have to plot it. Here I have just shown you with the variation of a pH value, how the impedance will change it. Here, this is the impedance characteristics I have shown you. And I prefer a a, a constant frequency, one independent frequency I'll prefer. And then at that particular frequency, what is the impedance value for different uh, values of the pH concentration of the unit? I'll plot it. And there you can see, uh, it, that's a, it is known as a calibration chart. And uh, you can see there's a two slopes that exist. One is 
below the uh, six near to the six to five another is above that two slopes and now if the data is uh, uh, this calibration data is now fed into your embedded system uh, you can get for you can analyze the ph value of a unknown sample and this uh, if any one of you are interested you can go through this uh, your your this journal publication of ours in uh, 2020 ieee census journal details are there and here it is uh, the impedance value i have to get it so this is the sensor part from the sensors i'll have a signal conditioning unit the i'll capture the signals the impedance and through this 18593 whatever uh, uh, the chip has been whatever chip has been used here in this case the same chip we have used it because 85933 is a uh, chip for the impedance analyzer you can select what frequency it will be and uh, it can measure the impedance starting from the few kilo ohms to 100 or tens of mega ohm uh, uh, <coughs> it is a dedicated chip for the impedance analyzer so the signal conditioning part is uh, connected with the uh, impedance analyzer chip and then you have a other uh, microcontroller with a ram and rom uh, which is connected so one side i can use a display for immediately displaying what is the ph value my student they are now working on that on the other side through this uh, connection uh, serial port you can get the data into the computer that part we have already developed and we have uh, now published that paper so this is a embedded system and this specific uh, embedded system is uh, designed to get the ph value of the of the urine using this paper based sensors this is one example i'm giving you the other is, uh, is your detection for the lab on a chip again specific for this lab on a chip uh, here you have a different uh principles for a lab on a chip detection the optical detection technique can be useful electrochemical detection magnetic detection and mass sensitive detection can be made in this case we will go for the um, electrochemical uh, detection technique uh, one of the part of this is uh, of the study is how to actuate how to actuate a droplet a single droplet i want to actuate for some specific application maybe for any electrochemical uh, reaction process maybe for the uh, for drug testing purpose for a small amount of drug to be tested new drug to be tested in that case we can utilize this platform the basic principle is that here it is that Mm, the electro weighting on dielectro uh, dielectric e w o t electro weighting on dielectric setup basic principle is that here you have a substrate on which a electrode is is formed electrode means it is a metal flame is formed on top of that you have a hydrophobic uh, dielectric layer two properties has to maintain one is the hydrophobic another should be the dielectric okay and now it is uh, on top of that a, a isolated droplet is created anything it may be the water droplet also once and put a two uh, electrode one will be connected to the droplet another will be connected to the metal underlying metal layer but droplet is seated on a hydrophobic dielectric layer hydrophobic in the sense that this droplet has a the contact angle of this droplet is more than 90 degree so the shape will be like this to get the shape in this form we should have a hydrophobic dielectric layer a uh, hydrophobic layer the dielectric is so the is required so that the droplet will not be directly in contact with the metal flame 
for this two reason we should have a we should choose some material which is hydrophobic as well as dielectric in most of the cases dielectric material is chosen thin film uh, and it is coated by the thin film uh, technique on top of that a teflon a thin layer some uh, atomic layer of the teflon is used which acts as a hydrophobic okay that way it is made now if we apply a potential between these two the uh, the contact angle will help initially without giving a, a potential the contact angle uh, it is a hydrophobic so it was more than 90 degree but with a suitable application of a uh, potential value the contact angle will change and it becomes hydrophilic in nature and the shape will looks like this here it uh, uh, actually follows the young lipman equation they are the inventor and uh, it goes and nowadays we have a lot of application using the ewod platform in uh, one of our students uh, phd student he did some work and uh, um, uh, to generate or to manipulate the this droplet on a platform so here he made this kind of your uh, isolated individual electrode which is in the triangular form but they are insulated they are they are they are isolated from each other and to access this electrodes you have a bond pack at the periphery so this is the actual mask and uh, i am not talk about the microfabrication process the fabrication process has been uh, given it over here each and every fabrication process so that we can get a we can get a, 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 a device electrolyting device ewod device on which uh, the, the the substrate was the glass on which we get the aluminium electrostructure pattern electrostructure on top of that we put the silicon dioxide or other insulating layer with the teflon coating and then we started actuating the electrode the difference of this design difference of this design along with this one is that in this case the one electrode will be taken as a uh, sorry the droplet will be taken as a one electrode and the metal is taken as a another electrode and that way if we apply a voltage the shape will change like this but it is in a static condition but in the other design here as i told you that the electrodes are the uh, shape of the electrodes is triangular and they are individual electrodes are in placed in series then a droplet which is placed over there in the first electrode a droplet is placed over the first electrode and the actuation mechanism actuation will be between this electrode and this another next electrode in that case the uh, forward angle will be will get uh, the hydrophilic in nature less than 90 degree and the liquid will move in the forward direction and once it comes here then the subsequent this electrode will be activated with a uh, with respect to this electrode and in the next step the droplet will move in this direction and that way the droplet which was placed in the first electrode can move to the along this line by actuating uh, by serially serially actuating the uh, different electrodes in this way at the droplet will move <clears throat> here for automatic actuation of the of the different electrodes automatic actuations of the different electrodes we have used a embedded system which will act as a switching circuit as well as it will produce the high voltage so here the requirement the requirement for the embedded system for this case was a different where the impedance data has to be analyzed for a particular frequency and get the variation of ph uh, impedance variation with the ph value at a particular frequency and then it will be displayed or it will be transmitted but in this case the embedded system has been developed for actuation purpose actuation of the different electrodes here i have shown you the some cross section and area two electrodes and therefore one electrode where the droplet present and in the next electrode next electrode will be positive so that 
the uh, the forward angle will becomes the less than 90 degree and doublet shape will be something like this so uh, in the next phase the next electrode will be act activated with respect to this and the doublet will move to the uh, move forward for that mechanism for doing it automatically we have this embedded system that means it will be a switching circuit how the different electrodes will be switched in a sequential manner not only that for this actuation or for the doublet movement i require very high voltage but this high voltage can be generated using a 5 volt supply so uh, a high voltage means about say uh, it may be uh, 100 more than 100 volt is is a requirement in this case we have used a dc dc boost power amplifier and all which has been done using this mega arduino mega embedded system integrated together and the circuit embedded system will perform two tasks one is the uh, generation of a high voltage and switching of the electrodes uh, active electrodes sequentially and the switching sequence the time and amplitude of the voltage can be controlled using this embedded system by which we can do the yeah here more details is there and with the actual picture of your embedded system switching circuit and uh, uh, you can do a uh, lot many things and you can do the uh, the chemical reaction process within a very small platform okay. <clears throat> and you not know whether yeah this is the actual setup i am not going into the details uh, but i I, do I have any time? I am not sure. So I'll skip it. What I can get is doublet actuation uh, make, uh, dynamics using the different voltage, actuation voltage, the droplet velocity, displacement, and charging time has been calculated for some application purpose. Okay. But the purpose of this embedded system is here. Now next is your, this is the uh, last one example. Why there is a need for a point of PR hematocrit sensor? Probably in your uh, different, uh, this presentation, you are aware and you know the importance. Here I'll show one of our joint student which was so much October, this is working on the point of PR hematocrit sensors. So the anemia is a disease and predominant uh, exist in the young children and the uh, women, especially in the our in, the, in our country. Gold standard techniques for estimation is limited by certain constant, large sample volume, high cost, large analysis time, limited throughput, power supply requirement. It has to be done in the uh, clinics, otherwise it is not because the machine is bulky and <clears throat> sophisticated lab instruments. So these are the limitations by which, for which this measurement cannot be deployed in a rural uh, segment in a resource limited places. We should have some kind of a very small and uh, point of care uh, lab on a chip uh, device system so that we can do it at any places. This is the actual objective. Paper and pencil, again, uh, I'll not go through the details. You know the importance of that. So here, the simple fabrication of a implemented hematocrit sensors uh, with, the, uh, with the different instrumentation has been given, has been uh, developed using a cellulose paper and graphite pencil. The volume of the sample is only 25 microliter. You can understand. Uh, uh, comparing to the conventional meter, this volume requirement is very, very small. And approx uh, cost also we have determined, which is very less. Our developed sensor has been calibrated with 10 different whole blood samples and validated with 40 different whole blood samples using the Agilent 4249A precision impedance analyzer. So this is a, uh, I have specifically given this one. Initially, while we have developed and standardized our sensors, we have 
used a standard impedance analyzer instrument, which is quite bulky in nature and costly also. It is the Azilent 4294A. And we have we got the sensitivity of uh, which can meet our requirement and all uh, other other sensor sensor uh, data we have uh, parameters we have calculated. Now moving forward, that means how this research output can be uh, taken further as a point of care devices because the sensor part in this case only we have standardized optimized our our sensors. But the analyzer, the impedance analyzer, which I was using, uh, it was a quite bulky. It cannot be deployed in the rural field. Towards that, to make that, we have worked and sorry, using again the same chip, AD5933 chip. It is an impedance analyzer, high precision impedance converter. This smaller in size, power supply requirement. See, it is less than five volt. I can use a battery. Power consumption is thirty milliwatt, and that also satisfies for uh, for deployment in the in the uh, resource limited places. It is economic, and time factor which is needed for testing is only three seconds. And availability of uh, off the cell Bluetooth solution. This is the entire circuit I can so, uh, uh, develop. Uh, the, 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 our student uh, newly this year has developed. This is an embedded system and where uh, the chip is uh, the sensor. This is the sensor part, paper-based sensors with the graphene, graphite electrodes. And within this small region, which is already identified, and in that region we put the 25 microliter of droplet of uh, blood sample. It is uh, just a droplet, drop of blood sample. We put it. It will not spread beyond this space because this boundary is kept uh, hydrophobic. Although a cellulose paper has been used, but blood will not spread across that because of this uh, hydrophobic barrier layer. And the electrical signals, the impedance signals was taken by these side electrodes and the electrodes was made using the pencil, graphite pencils. And then it is connected, electrically connected to this embedded system where specifically the sensor has been put that, uh, sorry, not the sensor, the, the, the AD5933 uh, uh, chip has been put. It will uh, it will sense the impedance value for the different frequency and then it will fed the data, entire data or result through this ASB cable to the computer. This laptop interface with this uh, for evaluation, for recording of the impedance and finally it also analyzes the ACT uh, value. And here we did the measurement as well as the calibration. And the previous previous diagrams I have shown how the calibration has been done using the Agilent instrument. In the second case here, the calibration was done with a wide variation of hematopic value. The jet value, the impedance will vary from few kilohertz to the tens of kilohertz. And this region, for this particular region of the hematopic, the Output is quite linear also, which we want. It should be linear, should not be non-linear. And in the second case, with that calibration chart, we have verified, validated our device. Here, here in the x-axis, you have a clinical ACT value. And in the uh, y side, y-axis, we have a detected ACT value. This detection is through our sensor. And uh, uh, where uh, we, we, we calculated the R square value and which is reasonably good enough that our sensors and the circuit part is quite uh, uh, okay for deployment in the uh, practical uh, field, field deployment. So with that we have developed the entire circuit and here this is the result, the uh, final results we can show 
from the very low value 25 to 50 no matter which percentage how the impedance value changes using ad 5963a so with this, I'll just conclude the, the, uh, here, the successful attempt made to fabricate the paper-based sensors. We, we are working together with the, uh, Professor Aditya and Professor Suman Chakravarti's lab. We are working uh, to our power school, have a common PhD students. <clears throat> so, but specifically in my labs, it is a biomems lab, so we do the develop the different paper-based uh, sensors based on the implementary or amphiometric uh, methods. The whole blood sample has also been analyzed using the compact um, embedded electronic system for point of care hematopoietic analysis. Study enables the development of a cost-effective and ra rapid diagnostic method for the low ACT anemic conditions in portable platform. That's why we want to detect the anemic patient in a rural areas. For that, we have extended this to the up to 25. Even we are working with the below 25, up to 15 hematocrit percentage, we are working on that, but we have completed up to this value. And final conclusion is that microcontrollers are the integrated part of the embedded systems and widely used for various biomedical applications. Many health monitoring systems nowadays use the embedded system along with the Internet of Things. Major limitation of these systems are the availability of the system memory and the processor speed. That is the uh, uh, limitations. But the examples, whatever we have given, it is a standalone system. As well as we do not, this is a small scale, so do not require much memory RAM or ROM and the processor would not require a very high end processor also. But if you nearly want a very high speed uh, uh, to, uh, uh, you should have a arm based processor where uh, widely used, accepted among the researchers as it provides greater memory allocation and thus processing speed. So, with this, I'll now conclude uh, here. And for this, I'll just whatever my, our students, as I told, Anjali, I must acknowledge them, my, our students, our uh, Anjali, who is doing the, at the last stage of the PhD with Dr. Suman Chakravarti and myself, and um, uh, Mr. Moinak Basu, uh, he is a, uh, a joint PhD student with uh, Professor S. Uh, Das Gupta of Chemical Engineering Department and myself, and the paper based that pH sensors is uh, Mr. Um, is Mr. Sobik, Sobik Vistas. Uh, he is a student of SMST, uh, jointly with Professor, uh, another colleague of SMST. So with this, I just uh, want to conclude and thank you all. So if you have any questions, quickly I will take. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Students, do you have any specific questions? Someone has raised their hand. Sir, about the limitations you are discussing, sir. Yeah, yeah. The limitations of this type. Limitations of the sensors. Yes, yes, sensors. Yeah, different sensors has the different uh, limitations. Like a pH sensor, it has its own limitations. Uh, uh, limitations in the sense, it is a, again the application specific. Suppose uh, sensitivity, dynamic range, the the selectivity. These are the parameters we have to uh, take care. So again, uh, uh, maybe for hematocrit, whatever the uh, sensors we have developed in that case, initially we are up to 25 
or even the 30 hematopoietic percentage it was because it is a it was a uh, impedance based i have not talked about the theory of the impedance although one slide is there so you can just uh, take it uh, read that and uh, so what we want to go below 25 hematopoietic percentage for the deployment of the, the detecting the anemic patient. In that case, initially our sensors were not so much insensitive, but later on, some modification of the sensor parts that uh, now we are working so that not only the 25 or 22, we are even going to the 15 or 16 percentage of the hematocrit value. Upper le at limit, yes, you can go, we can go, uh, uh, because of the principle by which it works, but the detecting the lower, lower, lower limit is a quite challenging. Because as basically the impedance is nothing but the how many number of hematocrits present in the electric, the current flowing path that we have to detect. Now, if we have more numbers, then the uh, current flowing will be more complicated. I mean, it will act as a barrier. Matokrits could uh, be act as a barrier and uh, you will get higher and higher resistance or uh, impedance. But in case it is a very low, that case, it is not only the hematocrit along with that, the other par other components will also contribute into the uh, into your impedance. And that way, there will be a limitations and, there, and the another factor will also come in, that is the uh, selectivity. We want to measure only the hematocrit percentage. For a very normal blood, it is okay, up to certain limit. But if you go below that, other um, component will also, co also contribute. And how we can do that, that is the challenge part. And we are working on that. So similarly, for the other, other, um, well, other sensors also, you have a different limitations. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any other questions or? Yeah. <clears throat> so if uh, no other questions, then I can leave. As I found, there is no other question. So.